Welcome to OpenMentor.net. In this session, we are going to see how we can do parameterization using IBM Rational Performance Tester. What I'm going to do is I'm going to record a script. Okay. Uh, let me say DDT1, Data Driven Test 1. Okay. So I choose Internet Explorer as the browser. Then I click Finish. It starts a browser. As usual, I'm going to clear the cookies and cache. Better do that every time because we may have something in cache. We may miss that. So better to clear the cookies and cache. Okay. Now I go back. I started uh, accessing the application. This is the application URL I get in. The user logs in. Now I want to add different uh, locations. Okay. I click here at the location code. Now it has code, description, address, etc. In the code, I'm going to enter okay, location uh, L 10001. Let me say description L 10001 address I'm going to say uh, area 1 city Chennai state TN I add that it gets added over here you could see that at the bottom now I log out okay now I close the browser so one user has gone in and then created the test. That one user has uh, entered different locations. So if you go through the pages, this is the home page, this is the login page where the user entered eadmin and 123 and then location master. Then location master in that form we entered this. So I noticed uh, the think time here uh, was around uh, 30 seconds because I was explaining something. Now I'm going to change that to say uh, 8 seconds, okay, 8000 milliseconds. Now this is the data. So anything that can be parameterized, okay, this guy will show in green color, okay. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add multiple data. So the code, description, everything should come from that. <coughs> so how will I do that? So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to open up a simple notepad file, okay. In this notepad file, let us uh, increase the font size to say 16. Now I'm going to enter the item codes, right, the location codes, right, L9001, description L9001, then this area is area 1 then I say Chennai, then TN. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to copy paste this, change the data to L9002, description L9002, area 2, instead of Chennai let us say let us have a different city, okay? Let us say uh, London. I'm just giving the uh, state name as L and something like that. So I'm going to enter one more data. I say let us have five more data in this. Three, four, five. So you need to prepare the data uh, using a CSV file, okay? And you need to prepare a valid data which is used in your application. This data should not be rejected. So you need to make sure that you enter that kind of a data, okay? Now. I'm giving different values for this. I'm going to save this file. Save this file as a CSV. Okay. Uh, my data dot CSV. I save this. This is done. Now what I'm going to do is in RPT, if I want to parameterize from a file, I need to create file new, then data pool. Okay. 
data pool is nothing but okay let me say my data click next how many variables are columns how many columns we have got I think we have got about uh, five columns so the location description area city and then state five columns I'm going to have five rows okay now I'm going to say import CSV into the new data pool okay I check this then it says okay now show me the CSV file now I go here it is in the desktop I choose that CSV file okay now it says CSV file line 1 equivalence class is missing that is because these two checkboxes are checked I remove these two okay let us for a moment let us remove these two because the first line you need to give it in a specific way okay now once this is done I click finish okay now he says there is a different uh, dimension you are talking about he says five variables and five records now he says uh, okay let me import it let me overwrite do you want to open the editor now it asks I say yes now if you see here that nine one two three four five and the row starts at 0 I gave 5 so it looked at 6 so I'm going to right click and then remove that record now there are only 5 so the first line whatever you have entered in your CSV file is here if you want to change the data just double click and then say change the data right here okay you can change that not an issue at all okay now the first line it was asking about the equivalence class right just click on the column give the name now I'm giving the name like uh, code click OK and it says code colon colon string so if you enter the first line in this way it will not give issues but you don't have to enter that now I'm saying description the third thing is uh, area the next one is uh, city okay now the next one is state so there are five columns that we have done now I'm saving this so we have recorded a script we have created the data in a CSV file we imported we changed the column names now I come over here here is the trick now what I want is the whole stuff okay the whole thing there is a data going on right I just select that now it says when you come to that place when I select that I just watch this I go here this button is disabled I come here this button is disabled substitute button is disabled now when I select that one it says substitute that is enabled click on that now it says select data source I click on that now it says okay no references found let me click no then I click data pool that is the data pool click on that window now it says there is a my data this is the data pool added now I'm saying code this is the column okay now I click next now it says take it sequential okay there are different modes then there's a sequential or random or shuffle now I say sequential okay now I click finish now this data pool is added now what I want to do is to replace this L1001 take the value from this column I need to just select that though you have added that you need to enable check that on select it from the code now I select the code I click OK now it says substituter created it says the operation will find more substituted locations in that test have the same value in this substitution do you want to do anything I click yes it says there are two pairs places it is found now I select these two checkboxes substitute checked I do that okay so he does something automatically now I say substitute checked and then say close now I select the second one now again it has substitute now it says select from data source same technique this time I am not using the code I am using the description column select now it says substituter created do you want to make any changes I say yes it says one found it's already replaced that one not an issue close that third one substitute select from data source 
now it says this is the area you you select that column select the same technique it says it is used in some other place okay you have the moment he shows in green that means he has already done the substitution so we don't have to do anything just close then for the city okay substitute select data source same technique select from the city column select yes then he has already substituted clause for the state same way substitute select stores then I select state select yes then he has already replaced no problem so what I have done is I have replaced all these things okay with data pool values now what I want to do is this has to run for five times okay so how do I do that for five times so now I select all these okay so I select all these things okay you can do it in multiple ways you can add a loop okay you can uh, this is like an inserting a loop or if you can run five iterations okay for the users in the scheduler that will also do that way I will do you don't have to insert this I will show that how to do that now we have parameterized the data we recorded the script we created the data in the data pool then we have substituted all those data references then it becomes green once this is done I go to the I create a new schedule a performance schedule DDT schedule then I click next how many number of initial users I'm going to say only one users okay okay now I say add loops to each group okay then I say count based that's what I'm doing I'm going to have only one user I'm using a loop counter okay the moment I do that okay it has done this loop the moment I say create a schedule one user and then have a loop and they count based by default it says one iteration now I want five iterations the moment say I five iterations because I have five rows in that now underneath that loop I add the script the script that we recorded just now DDT1 I add that so what is going to do is each user there are there is only one user but that user will do five rounds of testing goes login then comes back logs out as the item and he is using this script this script is parameterized to take data from that and since it is running five iterations right he is going to insert all the five records now I go here let us go to the uh, local host or 192 let us go to the application okay I go to this application the admin 123 now I go to the locations that is only L1001 now I'm going to run this guy let us run this schedule see what happens it may take a few time minutes let it run once it, say it says there is an error let us see what that error is all about okay when I expand that it says there is some problem in some custom code and and if you select that it, it is saying the error is in some other place okay it is not in this we have not added any custom code so he says this is a Java problem in in some other code so what I'm going to do is that code is in one of these files so I'm going to delete some of the scripts which we don't want okay so we remove that then let us try to run this once again because if there is any compilation error in some other scripts since they are under the same project RPT will give an error so now I removed that since the error said it was in some other place I moved that now I'm trying to run now it says again there is a problem okay let us try to see I data area cannot be resolved let us find out why this error repeatedly happening in this project okay what I did is just double click it opens up this is the place it shows some error I just comment that in the Java code then I save everything then uh, let us get closed on this see what happens now let us go back to our 
DDT schedule. Try to run once again. Now this time he is launching because he is not getting into any issues because somewhere in some other program there was a problem. So he showed errors over here since this is Java Eclipse he tries to compile all the programs underneath the project. So we need to make sure all the other scripts do not have any issues else it will start giving compilation errors. All the simple trick is just double click on that. Now it's launching the schedule. He's going to run one user and he's going to run that for five iterations. Let us see what happens when he runs it for five iterations. It may take a few minutes but it's while what what to watch that what's happening there okay now he's running so if you see here one user is running and this user will go to the home page will go to the login page for the first iteration he will take the first data insert the first data for the second iteration he will take the second data for the third iteration he will take the third data like that he will do five full iterations after five full iterations he will stop then we will go to the application and then verify whether all those data are added in the application that's what is our aim okay now as it does let us go back to the application then just uh, refresh this now you see the script is running when I refresh the L 90,001, 90,002 is added. Now when I run, there are now two iterations are over. He has added this. This is the one that I added when, when I recorded. This is the one added by the script now. Now there are two iterations over. He has inserted two records. So if you watch, right, since it is running, it is still running. Once it finishes, you will see all the five data over here. Now I refresh. Now the third data is also added. Okay, now 90,001, 90,002, 90,002, you see Chennai, London, Trichy, all these things are coming from the data pool. So whatever you see in the data pool, the data is coming from the data pool and then this schedule, this data is being used in this script and then this script is used in this schedule. When this schedule is running, this is using the data given in the data pool and that is what we are seeing in the application. So if I go back, now I press F5, fourth data is also added. Okay. So if multiple, right now one user is running multiple iterations. If five users are running within one iteration, all the users will exhaust the data. So you need to supply as much data as possible to the scripts. Now it's still running. Let us go back, refresh, five data are added. So you have got five data in your data pool all the five data Chennai, London, Trichy, Chennai, Salem all area 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 9001, 90001, 2, 3, 4, 5, 90001 so this is very easy so if you want to insert thousands of data okay now you see here all the users the one user has finished that now so many pages were accessed he provides the results so this is and you can verify back in your application whatever data you have given in the data pool will be added in no time. So this is the data driven test how to parameterize data using a data pool in a script. Very simple create a CSV file import substitute values create the schedule as simple as that. You will end this session over here. Thank you.